Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 18 about creating a game in HTML5. So in this video, what we will be doing is um, changing the size of the images so they kind of make sense. And we will also work on a map system. If you haven't watched the last episodes, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. Okay, so let's get started with the images. So we go inside our entity um, prototype slash function in the drawing. So this is where we actually draw the image of our entities. If you remember correctly, entities is the um, bullets, the player, the monsters, the upgrade, pretty much everything. Um, so what we do is that we calculate the X and the Y and then we just draw the image. If we only specify the X and the Y, so image X, Y, the browser assumes that we want to use the full image and we want to keep it the, the regular size. So if we don't want the default behavior, we need to specify more parameters. So this is how you do it. Um, you will need to pass nine parameters. The first one is the crop start X, then Y, then width, then height, and then the draw X, Y, draw width, and draw height. So for the cropping how it works, basically, let's say I got that image and I only want to draw that section, for example, then I would specify that the um, start X and the start Y would be about 100 because this is the starting point of 100. And then let's say I want to draw that part, it would be a, a width of about 300 and an height of 50, for example, if I just wanted to draw that thing right there. So this is how it would work. Now for the drawing, this is what will actually be drawn on the canvas. So where do you, the X position on the canvas that you want to draw? It's exactly the same than this X and this Y. But the other parameter that we can pass is the width. So how large you want it to be. So let's say that in our case, we only want to select that little, that part, but instead of drawing it full size, we only, we want that section to only fit in that part. So we will specify a, a smaller width and a smaller height than what it's supposed to. It will make more sense when I will actually put values into it. Um, so in our case for our entities, um, if you remember correctly, we don't actually want to select only draw a section of them. We just want to draw them smaller. So what we want to do is to actually select the whole thing. So let's say that this is the bat. I want to select from point zero zero all the way to 3232 because I want the full thing. So that's what we will do. So crop X, crop Y, we want to start at the bottom. And then for the width, um, there's a parameter self image width. So image, if you remember correctly, it's a image we created here, right there, we selected new image, and then we specify the source. But with image, there's also a list of properties you can access, for example, the width, and the height. So this will return, for example, um, well, not for the player, but for the enemy, it would return 32 and 32. So in our case, we want that and we want this. Now for the draw X and Y, like I said earlier, it's exactly the same than before. And now for the draw width. So how big do we actually want it to be on the screen? So um, one thing to know is that we already have a width and an height parameter in our entity. So we will simply use it. And if we use those parameter, all the collision and everything will match with the image. So that will be great. So just self width and self height, something like that. So let's just check how it looks now. So if I update, there's actually an error image is not defined. Um, image, image, image. Oh, yeah, it's self image. Okay. Whoops. There we go. So now the bullets are a lot smaller. The enemies are a bit weird. Because if you remember correctly, the width and the height of the enemies is randomly generated. And that's why they are kind of weird. We will change that. Uh, bullets are kind of small, player is kind of small. So let's just fix the, the values manually. So if we go in our player, right now the player is 2020, it will become 5070. The enemy, instead of having a, a random width, so between 10 and um, 40, it will always be 64 and 64. Now for the bullets, randomly generate bullet, the height and width will be 32. And finally, for the upgrades, they will also be 32, 32. So if we refresh the page, this is how it looks. 
There we go. So it kind of matches a little bit better. And all the collisions still work. So if I try to go out of bond, it will prevent me. If I touch in upgrade, everything will work. Because we are actually using the, the parameter height and width for all our collision testing. Okay, so what we are going to do next is to um, add a map to our game. So for now, it will be very simple. It's just an image that will draw below everything. So um, let's actually create a function called draw map. And the only thing it will do is that it's going to draw the image of the map. So image map, if you remember correctly, I put it there already, even though we were not using it. And then we will draw it at zero, zero. Now we need to specify the browser when to call that function and we will um, call it at the beginning of the update loop. So right after wiping out the Canva, we will draw the map. So let's see how it looks. So there we go. So th the player is a bit big compared to the size of the map. So what we are going to do is to change the, the drawing to make it bigger. So if you remember correctly, we want the full size of the... Yeah, okay, there, there's two ways to see it. If we go out of bounds, so if we draw too much, for example, right now we are drawing too much, the image actually extends beyond that point, but it, it does not show up because the Canva is smaller. And um, so you can draw big things and it only a small portion of it will be drawn. And this is what we are going to do. Um, so we will crop it and then we will draw it um, two times the size. Something like this. Right. Okay, so if we refresh, this is how it looks. So it, it matched the size a little bit better. Okay, so now if we want to make a map that the player can explore, we may need to come up with a system for map transitioning. Um, so there's two approach to it. Either um, one method is that when you're near an edge, there's the transition, or there's the other way that the player is always in the middle of the screen and it's the map that moves around them. Kind of like in Raining Chain, the MMORPG I'm currently making. So the player is always in the middle and when he moves, it's the map that, that moves around. So now what we need to do is to figure out what is the X and the Y, so the position where to draw the map. So we do know it depends on the player position, because if the player moves, then obviously the map needs to be changed. But there's also other factors. So uh, in order to figure out what the formula is, let's take the, the easy value. So if the player, is, the position X and Y of the player is half the width and half the height, then we want to draw the map exactly like we are currently drawing it, so at zero, zero. So that's a very important value. So if the player x is equal to the width divided by two, then the offset, the x will become zero. Another way to do that, so if both of them are equal, it's exactly the same than doing one minus the other equal zero. It's exactly the same. And in that case, it also means that that is equal to this. Now, let's do the, the, other, the other part because we don't know yet if it's a this or that. Bo both of them would work. We need to figure out which one of the two is the good one. So let's say that I'm here and I move to the right. So my X increase, but when we actually draw the map, we need to draw the map further left to, to make it seems like the player went right. So if the player X increase, increase means that the map X decrease. And that's exactly what that formula does. So if this increase, then the X decrease. So let's actually figure out if, let's test out if we are right. So that minus player X. So this is how it looks. So if I'm in the middle, as you can see, the, the map is drawn as usual. If I go top left, then the map transition at the bottom right, which makes sense. Now, the only problem is that the player is not drawn always in the middle. So that's something we need to, to do. And also the monster are also not affected by, by the map transition. So it kind of feels 
Weird. So let's actually fix that. So in our draw entity right here, um, we'll need to change the X and the Y to reflect the position of the player. Because if the player moves, then every NPCs around him needs to move too. So one value that we are sure is that if the self is the player, then we need to draw it at the middle of the screen. So if our formula when self is the player does not gives off the middle of the screen, then the formula of course is wrong. So how I will do it is that I will first get the difference um, from player x. So this will be equal to self x minus player x. So this is the, the offset from the player. And then we also do it for the y. And we do know that if this if the distance from the player is zero, then we want to draw it at at the middle of the screen. So it's actually distance from the player plus width divided by two. And same thing goes for this. So in that case right now, if this equals zero because self is the player, we add the width divided by two and our formula works. So I would say that that's the right formula. And we also need to take into consideration the, the width when we are drawing, so we actually need to do minus equal self width. If we want the middle, like if we want the disposition x to be the middle of the image, we need to add a little offset to it, equal to the f, the size of the image. There we go. And we can actually rename that x, y, x, y, x. Y and there we go. Let's just save and test if it actually works. Okay, so this is how it looks. So if I'm right here and I move right, as you can see the the upgrades and every entities in the map actually moves with me with the map. So everything seems great. Now we still have a problem because we cannot go over um, this border, which is at position 500. So the the width we put in the constant. So we'll need to figure out um, to actually make a distinction between the size of the Canva and the size of the map if we want to explore the full map. So this is what I will cover in the next episode. So if you want to watch it, you can click the annotation on the screen. And if you want to um, check out something a bit more advanced, you can check out the um, source code of Raining Chain. So the MMORPG I'm currently making. I will put that in the description if you want to check it out. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.